Welcome to Smart Branding, a podcast dedicated to branding, naming, and domain names. I'm Tatiana Bonneau, and with my guests, we try to help you create and grow strong, memorable, and meaningful brands online. I believe time is one of our most precious assets, and so I want to thank you in advance if you decide to spend the next 30 minutes with us. I promise to do my best to make those worth it. Let's go! So I reached out uh, after I saw Mars Sucks. We do, with smart branding, um, we tell or we try to tell stories of different brands um, and highlight some takeaways for entrepreneurs on how to build a good, strong brand. So we cover, like, try to cover different aspects like naming and branding and marketing and then inevitably when somebody talks about that you can get a lot of uh, insights into other things that have to do with entrepreneurship so we're not limited to any particular kind of topic but try to stay around branding obviously because you know it's smart branding <laughs> so yeah I reached out after I saw Mars sucks and then I, I looked at your main website and you do a lot of other things so if you don't mind, I, I might touch on that later on, but let's let's start with that, I guess. Let's start okay. with Marsax. Uh, yeah, tell me how, how did that came about? Obviously our lives are connected to the water, to the oceans, to everything. So, and, and, and now we are traveling to Mars, trying to find out if we have water there. So we felt it doesn't, make, it doesn't make any Crazy. sense. You know, going to another planet to figure out if we could live there instead of addressing the problems, the issues that we have here. So that was the idea, Absolutely. basically. And also, we we read an article, uh, an interview, actually, uh, on Fast Company, the magazine, and uh, they interviewed the uh, founder of Patagonia, and he said it's more or less the same. He was asked about Elon Musk. And what mm. do you think about these billionaires who are spending billions of dollars on trying to take us to Mars? And he said he had the same thought, basically, is, I mm -hmm. think, crazy. Actually, he says, screw Mars, screw Mars. Uh, I want to design a T-shirt. I'm going to ask my team to design a, a T-shirt, screw Mars. So we thought, well, there is something interesting, even in the <laughs> land, right? But basically... Yeah. This is not about, you know, against uh, SpaceX or space exploration. This is about priorities. Mm. And, and then we started working and, and finally with this brand, uh, we decided to, to explore a different route and we, we produced that route. And then we, when, when Earth Day was coming this year, we thought, hey, that's a very interesting message. We really want to do something to celebrate Earth Day in a different way because I think we shouldn't celebrate it because we are killing our planet. So instead of mm. celebrating, let's try to make a point. And that's the way we started working on Mars sucks. And then we thought, hey, what if Earth itself, the planet, signs the campaign? What if is Earth telling us, hey, Mars sucks for this, for that, or for that? Absolutely. It was, it was brilliant. I, I saw it at a time when it was really well-timed as well, because yeah. I was like in my head screaming, feeling exactly the same thing. And when I saw your campaign and the whole thing, I was like, yes, yes, exactly. That, that's, that's it. That's, you, you know, you walk around, you wake up, you breathe air, you, you have sun and sea and mountains. I, I like running in, in the mountains and yeah. um, like in my spare time. And I'm looking around every day. I, I, I'm, I feel like some crazy tourist because I've been living, I live in Nice in France and I've been living here for two years and I cannot stop taking pictures because I'm like, it's amazing. Everything is amazing. And, and then we're like spending so much time and energy and money into, you know, what, what, what is that about? So yeah, yeah. Um, that's, I, I really, I really found it great. Uh, you mentioned that started with some thoughts, uh, if, if I got that correct, that uh, somebody, they wanted to print a t-shirt with Screw Mars. How did you, how did you decide on Mars Sucks? It was as quickly. A name? Uh, yeah, it was quickly. I mean, we really wanted to have, uh, with this idea, it's, this is a hook, right? We really want to provoke a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, we thought this kind of language would help us to catch people's attention. 
it's simple mm -hmm. you know we had a very clear idea from the beginning is hey we as you said is the right it was the right moment so because mm -hmm. what is happening on the planet the right moment day because it's earth day and the right location because we really wanted to hey let's do something in front of the space x mm -hmm. so in front of nasa i thought i thought i thought that was photoshopped at the beginning and then i was like no they really actually did that for real yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for real good. we bought we that's we good. yeah we bought this billboard it was super cheap it was just one 24 hours okay it was beautiful really? by the way it was beautiful. digital it was a digital billboard no paper no waste etc super cheap and uh we we bought it for 24 hours and we it was beautiful it was just in front of the spacex headquarters mm. Uh, and that's and we thought obviously it's a billboard. We need uh, something very short that people get that mm. you can take a photo that can catch uh, can catch uh, uh, media and people attention. And that's yeah. uh, that's why Marsax came up. I think probably probably not for sure inspired by uh, the founder of, of of Patagonia when he says screw screw Mars. So we wanted to use the same yeah. relevant irreverent irreverent uh, message or uh, tone of voice. And something very short that people understand quickly and something that because for us is even for a the tone of voice was very important when you mm -hmm. think about you know talking about sustainability or or these kind of campaigns or project that's uh, to try to protect the our planet etc most people think this is very serious which is very serious but mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you need to deliver a very serious or heavy messaging uh, for us, the tonality mm -hmm. should be playful, witty, but also should mm -hmm. provoke you to think about it. So Marsac was a pro the provocation. Then on the website, mm -hmm. we have a lot of different messages, all of them based on real facts. For mm -hmm. instance, I saw uh, that. the closest really bit, uh, the closest, uh, the closest uh, bit uh, from March is like a, I don't know, a hundred million miles away. Mm. You know, it's it's a, it's a, it's true. You know, or the year yeah. in Mars is has uh, I think is the double of the, of, of this is six hundred and so, something days. So no, it was it was it's genius, it's genius, absolutely. And you've made it so because the thing is, if you start talking like scientifically about everything, it's not going to talk to a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. We are not scientists. You have science, science talking about it, etc. We really want to spark a conversation about mm -hmm. again priorities. Is is not again SpaceX, not again Elon Musk, not again uh, space exploration. It's about priorities. We, uh, we mm -hmm. as a company, activist, or myself as an individual, I think our all of us, our priorities should be. Yeah. Try to save our planet because our future, the future, uh, future generations' lives depends on this, I and mean, this is a crucial moment. So we Absolutely. thought it's our responsibility to do that. Again, doesn't mean that mm -hmm. uh, to do this, you should do uh, in a very like a serious statement that you can. But also for us, we thought this message with this tonality and this particular moment uh, and location was something that could provoke that conversation we wanted to provoke. And Mars sucks uh, as a line uh, was the hook, and also it, it was mm. it, it helped us to create the whole platform. You know, the website was marsax.com, mm -hmm. the hashtag were Mars sucks. Uh, we had another uh, hashtag that was um, prioritize Earth. So it was something that in, on social could could help us to you know to mm -hmm. provoke some conversations, and it was easy to get. And that's why we decided to to move on with that message. Great. How did you get the name, the the dot com, and why why did you choose the dot com? Because you I have the no, exactly the the URL. Mm. I have no idea. My partner did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the art director. He, he does all the things. I don't know. I think was I don't know. Uh, my partner did it. Uh, one of my partners. Uh, both the, the the name and and I don't know, but I can I can ask them and, and let you know. I know it's not yeah, it's just because it's not easy to get you know you come up with an idea. It's a huge problem to get the matching domain name, 
and many people overlook that or they yeah. go for a compromise domain name and as no, you we, mentioned we just search now, if, if, if it's something that someone had used before and nobody used it it was free so we, we bought it and uh, yeah it was simple oh. easy <laughs> that's good <laughs> all right and and you mentioned you worded it in a way to reach a wider audience and spark conversations how has the feedback been yeah, it was uh, polarizing in a way. I mean, we always say if, if if you are doing something that everybody likes, you are doing something. Yeah, not doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's it's crazy because you know we are living even you know think about COVID and uh, something mm -hmm. as that everybody should agree or like wearing a mask, uh, vaccination, etc. There are people that they don't believe <laughs> or they feel like yeah. they are their freedom. So it's so yeah. it's, you know we are scientists are telling us for a long time that hey we really need to protect our planets otherwise we you know we are going to become extinct and people mm. think this is a hoax or something like that so obviously they have different kind of reactions on Twitter on Instagram there were people who supported shared and and like the messaging and other people who criticized and told us that uh, we had no idea or or, or mm. insult us or etc but uh, it's part of the conversation you know that uh, when you That's make a it. point but, yeah. when you make a point people will agree with you or disagree and, and furthermore people we not just like but loved it in the way like they are going to share and, and be part of the conversation and other who are going to mm. say hey you are uh, whatever so <laughs> dreams, uh, but that was good <laughs> In terms of media, we we had um, we made headlines across the world, like Russia, India, Vietnam, Korea, states, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was it, mm. it was interesting. Great. Did you hear from Elon Musk? No, we didn't. Uh, no, <laughs> he didn't say anything. But uh, there were some publication that uh, so came to us asking uh, one of, I think it was Business Insider. And they said, hey, this is for real. They asked us, it's probably the same as you. You thought it was a Photoshop. Mm. And they asked, uh, yeah. send an approve. And we sent an approve that we bought the, the billboard. And then they approached us. They, they sent us some questions. And they approached a SpaceX, but they didn't didn't give them any statements. So, so I guess they ignore us. But I'm pretty sure they saw them saw it because it was just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but then again, then again, like you say, it's not even about that company or anything. It's more what they are a symbol of nowadays. And yeah. and I think in that respect, yeah, you absolutely got the message. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I like that a lot. Um, so that was on 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 Mars sucks. Um, do you? I mean, I, I don't know if you because I kind of started with that and then I looked at all the other things that you're doing and I, yep. I have some questions about that as well. If you if you don't mind. Absolutely. Cool. So you, I mean, how would you how would you call yourself? What what do you do as an agency? The yeah. So. Yeah, we are a, a creative company uh, of, uh, 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 with a mission with, uh, committed to driving positive change. You know, it's mm -hmm. me and my partner, he's Brazilian, I'm Spanish. We met in Brazil. We have over 25 years of experience, like working in big agencies uh, across the world, London, LA, Brazil, Spain. So after 25 years, a, we decided that we wanted to use our talent because we strongly believe that creativity can is like a, a powerful weapon. You can mm -hmm. use it for good or for bad. Unfortunately, most uh, the advertising industry have helped to create the stereotypes or sell things that people don't want to buy or et cetera, et cetera. We, we think that creativity should be used as like a force for good. And we use our talent to help a organizations and brands to provoke a positive change in the world. Uh, Absolutely. That's why we call it Activista. Basically, the, the name is the idea Activista because, yeah, it's someone committed, an activist is someone committed to provoke that change. And also because it has the word act, you know, it's our, our industry, advertising okay. is about telling stories. We feel in this moment, it's sometimes the acts 
are more important and powerful than the ads. So that's uh, that's the way mm. approach how we help uh, those brands and organizations that are truly committed to promote that that change, that positive change or positive impact. That's great. Yeah, you, know, you kind of sort of overlapped with what I had as a question because I was recently watching uh, Mad Men. Yep. And I know I'm like super behind on that. Like everybody has watched it a gazillion years ago, but I'm watching it yeah. now. And that, that was going to be my question because because <laughs> uh, I think they captured in that in that series really well the how advertising is portrayed and how people see advertising and unfortunately how it is in a lot of cases uh, where it's like uh, manipulative and you're trying to sell people something and it's all for profit. Um, so yeah, you, you you what you do is driving positive change with that yeah. so using that that force for good no i was gonna say because the, the business obviously has to be for profit you know people go into business or most oh, of, of them so can how, or not even can because obviously you're doing it and many companies luckily yeah. now it's almost like becoming fashionable and i'm i'm in two minds of Oh, now it's fashionable to be good, and then I'm like, who cares? You know, if everybody's is good and they're doing good things, and it's better, the reasons why they're doing it, whether it's to be fashionable or because they truly mean it, you know, I can live with that. I think that's, yeah, sure. that's kind of my take on that. But from your experience, can can a brand, can a business be socially responsible and like genuinely good and profitable? They have to, because otherwise. Um, you know, especially between young people, it's nobody will buy them. Uh, that's something mm. that is happening more and more. You know, it's, you know, in the past, you had different reasons to buy one product or their, comp or their competitors, price, design, distribution, etc. Now, another big reason is the impact that that product or brand is doing on the world. So between a brand that is, you know, this packaging is, uh, sustainable or this one is not mm. I prefer this one so it's not just because they now everyone became an activist etc it's because also you are not going to sell your product uh, because more and more people is not just about how much uh, so it's not about the price it's about why should I buy you and not your competitors mm. and I'm not in like a things related to sustainability but also we have people consumers have more and more information about brands mm. and if you are a brand that you are you know in your ads talking about gender equality but people now know and then, how many men and women i mean that kind of things uh and it's a reason uh again uh, that's why we feel we we believe that say brands should have you know they need to exist for something, for any reason, and not just for growing and selling more and more. You know, what's your role, mm -hmm. what you are doing uh, for the world? Um, I mean, that's some brands, but the others is, hey, I'm, a, I don't know, a ham, strawberry ham, and I just want to produce, or a cheese brand, I just want to produce the best cheese that I can produce good, but that produces in a sustainable way, pay, pay fairly to your workers, etc., etc. So that's... Mm -hmm. That's uh, something that brands need to take care of that nobody take, took care of before. And that's something important or reason to choose a brand or another. Nobody's perfect, mm -hmm. obviously, because, and, and that's for brands, for all of us, we can become uh, zero waste or, I mean, we, we need to actually, but, but we need to <laughs> bend the technologies or a lot of things. It's like a more complicated conversation. And obviously the work can stop. Hey, we can stop. Uh, producing think about COVID. you know we mm. stopped and suddenly the economies went down this is about yeah. redefining economies redefining goals we can you know the companies or corporations can be based on you know every every year you need to grow more and more and more but because that is, is unsustainable so we mm. need to find the right balance that's that's the thing and obviously there are brands that were born you know modern brands that that were born like they were created with a mission uh with a purpose mm -hmm. but other other brands that they need to adapt to these times and and, and we help 
both. And obviously, nobody is this is not about perfection. Even Patagonia, which is the more sustainable uh, brand, maybe um, they are not. I mean, once you produce something, you are polluting somehow. You know, mm. the thing is, you need to reduce as much as you can your impact. You need to be sustainable. That's that's what all the brands have to do. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely, that makes sense. That makes sense. And can you, because yeah, you mentioned some brands are just born that way, if you like, and others are trying to become that because you know life has changed. Like there's brands that are centuries old, yeah. and it was a different life. Yeah. It was a different reality. So you can't even blame them for being what they are because that was life. Yeah, time. you need to adapt to the new times. I mean, you have uh, I don't know Airbnb. Right, it's an app mm. that uh, allows people, everyone, to belong to anywhere. You know, you can, you know, it's a circular economy. It's, you know, it's it was born based on that idea. You have Dab, for instance, there was all these beauty products that probably is like a mm. hundred years old, but uh, some years ago they created this amazing platform called a Real Beauty. And they decided that whereas I the know that. beauty industry and fashion industry is all about portraying a fake or perfect mm. or idealized beauty, they decided to stand for real beauty. And they changed the whole thing, the way they cast women, the way they, the kind of women they feature in their ads. They created this foundation to help them. They were really ahead of time, I think. On exactly. That. And they basically, their purpose was is not just about selling you more shampoo or mm. wash thing. It's about we want help. We want to help women to have a positive relationship with their beauty and their bodies, and that's their mm. mission. That's their purpose, right? Yes. They want. Do they want to sell more? Obviously, otherwise they are not going to survive. But uh, it's about those things. You know, is I think the relationship between brands and and, and people have changed at the beginning. Mm. You, we were just consumers. So the brands wanted you like at the Mad Men age. They just mm. wanted to sell us something. Therefore, the relationship they wanted to establish was a commercial relationship. They were the brand, we mm -hmm. were the consumer. We were just consumers. Why? Because they were like a new products and you need, the brands needed to educate people. Why should they buy? How the product works, etc. Then suddenly when you know, there are more competitors, more brand offering the same kind of services or products. You try to establish a more emotional because you, you don't, mm. you can't say anymore anything that it makes it different your product than the others. So you need to establish mm. a more emotional relationship. That's why, you know, Nikes, Adidas, Apple, all those brands started to create, even not even talking or showing the products, it was more about emotional mm. uh, feeling. Oh yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, then, absolutely. It's all emotional relationship now. Exactly, and then now it's. Uh, I think brands and first of all, they are treating us as citizens as well, not just consumers. And secondly, sometimes we, as citizens, the uh, treat brands and the other way around. It's we become allies. You know, for instance, mm. in, uh, you know, younger people don't vote anymore. You know, they don't believe that politicians are the solution to the problems that the world is facing and sometimes mm. they team up with brands they become where their allies for to fight for causes you know they know that mm. the brands and companies have the power to change the world yeah, or to screw the war depending on what size they decided so yes, you vote with your pockets, yeah. Exactly. You vote with your wallet. Exactly. So that's the relationship. It's now like a, we are becoming allies. You know, I'm buying you, or I'm fan of you, or I'm supporting you as a brand, or you are supporting me because we have the same kind of mindset and we have the same. Purpose. We have the same values. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, no, always is perfect. You you see a lot of brands mm. out there that they are greenwashing and they don't have a a fully commitment on the other mm. on the other hand is obviously no brand is perfect you know this is not about perfection this is about progress this is about trying to do your best and committing you know it's that's why we say mm. it's more important what you do than what you say so do take action first and then communicate it don't tell me about i don't know lgbtq mm -hmm. rights 
and and you didn't uh, hire a trans person because it was trans you know what I mean mm -hmm. so, absolutely yeah. yeah on that because you obviously like I'm sure you have a lot of people or a lot of brands approaching you to work with you do you would you decline some work or how do you choose your clients sales because clearly like they choose you yeah. and they come to you but how do you choose them you, you can feel it very very quickly who is committed and who doesn't say it's not about declining brands it's, it's, it's not about brands or companies it's about the people behind those brands and companies and you can feel mm. very quickly uh, who is committed to what they are saying you know what i mean is mm -hmm. it takes you just one meeting to know uh, who is fully committed and who doesn't okay so you but you would you don't yeah we rec you... Decline. if we feel that that's something that is they are using just to greenwash or something we we decline mm. the project for sure yeah absolutely we don't have a process to say hey pick this mm -hmm. box just you know it's okay let's see the process let's see the history of the brand let's see who, who is you know the persons behind the brand their commitment and their 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 uh, their a uh, ambitions and, and what they really mm -hmm. that's that's what just uh, we go through everything they they want to tell us and we analyze the project and then we decide if it is for us or if it doesn't so they have to be if i understand correctly like if you feel they're the people behind the, the, the brand yeah, it's a business are authentic yeah, it's a combination of the people, the projects, and the and the commitment. You know, if you really want to do something for a specific community or for our planet, we really need to see that this is a truly commitment. You know, and a truly commitment is mm -hmm. from inside out. It's not just what you are asking people to do, but it's what your company mm -hmm. is doing already or is planning to do. Okay. Oh, it's planning to do. Yeah. So that's a that's a thing because. Again, I'm very much a, not a fan of, I wouldn't say, but I mentioned earlier, I think there's a lot of, like, it's easier for brands that are coming um, along now to to be more adapted to all that. But I'm thinking it must be very hard for brands that have an existing century. And we've seen a, a wave of rebrands and everything now. Brands that are trying to catch up and to adapt to. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. It Obviously, if you if your brand is two hundred years old, mm. you need to that. You can't say, "Hey, let's start <laughs> from scratch." You know, it is something yeah. the same as us. I mean, yeah, I'm not anymore like a a young person like I didn't know twenty. <laughs> and I need to that <laughs> to the time. So that kind of things. A, but uh, again, you for instance, another brand that we've been working lately is Rain Skincare. And uh, the C is, is, is a Swedish brand that Unilever bought some time ago, and they had always been pioneer of skincare in terms of uh, no chemis, uh, chemicals to your like the products, but also it's, it's very sustainable in the way that the packaging, etc. So a, uh, the, the the beauty industry, for instance, is 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 also is, is the, the most I think seventy percent of the waste uh, coming from the beauty industry is through the packaging. You know. You have all these mm. boxes with a lot of plastic, etc. Yeah. Because the more plastic, the more things is cooler. So they yeah. they've been working on, on on trying to reduce to become zero waste uh, for a long time. They are pioneers on this. They have some totally uh, zero waste uh, products uh, packaging. And we and it was funny because the CEO when we met him we felt this guy is is, is very interesting. He said, "Hey, every time one of my competitors launch a, a, a eco friendly product, uh, a, I tweet about it and I congrats uh, that competitors and people say, are you crazy? They are competitors. Uh, no, yeah. I know it's good for the planet. So we thought well, that's that's the idea, right? Is and we 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 created something uh, that we the line was in the fight to protect our planet. We are not competitors; we are allies. So we ask him, wow. "Hey, what if you celebrate? You know, when you go to buy uh, to Sephora or something, is you have hundreds of brands. All of them mm. look uh, that they are they care about the planet, the oceans, but not of them. But most of them are green washing. So what if you mm. celebrate those brands in your campaign?" that are as sustainable as you that was the idea we, we ran an open letter on the new york times that said these wow. are our competitors here's what you should buy them and it was 
four competitors of this brand and telling you why they should buy them. If, if you are considering other brands, please buy this because they are good for the planets as we do. You know, yeah, and, they're fighting for the same values. And that's, that's amazing. I, and that's, and that, it really shows confidence as well. Exactly. And, and it really shows your, your true value. It's like, it doesn't matter whether it's me or somebody else, if it's for, for the same, we're fighting yeah. for the same goals. And, and it was beautiful great. because we had a meeting in this campaign we were thinking to run before the pandemic, but uh, the COVID happened and, and we have to stop it. But before the pandemic, we were in San Francisco in a hotel, like a meeting where uh, this brand invited the competitors, the CEOs and founders of those competitors. It was one wow. beautiful moment of my career because you had these competitors like sitting around the same table thinking, hey, it's great to be here. Let's help each other. Let's open source our technology to other brands because yeah, in the fight to protect the world planet, we are not competitors, we are allies. So it was a beautiful That's moment. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's really lovely. And it's very reflective of, of your other work as well. And yeah. when, when initially when I, yeah, cause I came, I reached out to you for Mars Sucks. And then I looked at your website and I actually recognized some campaigns that I've known and loved over time. And I didn't know they're yours. And, and that's always been my concern is maybe the word when because there's that thing that like everybody tells you you should be good you should do good same in business and because yep. inevitably we work a huge percentage of our life so when you say you know in business that's still your life that's still you uh and everybody even like starting when you're a kid tells you 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 should be good you should do good and then you see that sort of a massacre that goes you know for profit for cash for whatever and i've really and that's why I brought up more questions about you and what you do and your campaigns and the brands you work with, because I really want to to bring to the surface and highlight the fact that actually good works as well. Like yeah, you no, don't I have to it. do that cutthroat, you know, mentality to to be a top global brand or business or entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, and actually you will find that there is a lot of data uh, that um, support these theories in terms of, I'm trying to find uh, stats that says, let me see, what is it? Um, that says a, you know, especially between young people, you know, mm. they, they decide what brands are going to buy, as you said, is they are voting for their uh, uh, career for the, for, uh, with their wallets. There is a, a stat that 66% consumers would switch from a product they typically buy to a new product from a purpose-driven company. This mm. comes to 91% for millennials. Wow. So it's a fact. I mean, again, is some people are doing because they strongly believe, they, they feel they have a responsibility for the planet, for communities, et cetera, et cetera. And also because... Is, is, is otherwise you are going to be able to sell mm. <laughs> those it's two good. reasons that more are, do, do, both are valid uh, it doesn't matter yeah. if you are doing for one or another or for both it's good i mean uh, the outcome is, yeah. is good for everyone so absolutely absolutely right hold on i think i'm losing you there is that my connection or yours hello is that your my connection is still as I think we'll have some problem with connection. Yeah. You, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can hear you now. You're back. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. I have okay. just five more minutes. I really need to run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know. I know. I can talk forever. I can talk forever. I have uh, like other questions, but let's forget about them. And just a quick one. What would your advice be to entrepreneurs that are just starting out in terms of branding? Oh, <laughs> that's a difficult question. Uh, quick one. <laughs> Sorry. A, <laughs> well, a, I, think a, I think you should have a very clear idea what you are offering. I mean, this is, we are a credit company. We help brands to, for me, the most difficult thing is, you know, a brand, a startup, a company is about, trying to get a little bit of space in the brain of uh, the head mm. of, of people. So how you can get there, how they can consider you, how they can uh, uh, position you. It's, you really mm. need to have a very 
clear and simple statement is, you know, the elevator page. You know, when you have mm -hmm. one minute to talk about something, to pitch an idea, someone is just one line. Tell me one line. Uh, for me, Mark it's very sucks. important now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, what's your purpose? Why do you exist? For mm -hmm. me, that's the main thing is, and it's not easy to find out, you know, it's what's, why your brand, company, service, or whatever exists. What are you giving to, you know, what are you offering uh, that is good for us, for people, and for our planet somehow? So basically, that's my advice is have a very clear idea. Why do you exist? That's great. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you. I could, I could go. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Smart Branding Podcast. Feel free to visit smartbranding.com for more information and reach out if you have any suggestions, questions, ideas, or just want to learn more about how a good domain name strategy can help you build a strong and successful brand. See you next time.